Celtic Ancestry. Celtic Ancestry is rooted in the cultures that once stretched across much of Europe, from the Atlantic coasts of Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, to ancient communities in France and Central Europe. These regions share a landscape of short summers, long winters, and pale northern light drifting over cool, wind-carved coasts. In these conditions, high rates of lactase persistence offered steady calories when growing seasons were brief. Variants of the MC1R gene, particularly widespread in Ireland and Scotland, lighten skin to boost vitamin D production under dim sunlight. These same traits produce the unique red hair deeply associated with Celtic folklore. Alongside it, a unique HFE gene variant increases iron uptake, hypothesized to protect against anemia during famines or winters with limited protein. Together, these traits created constitutions well suited to the North Atlantic's dim, nutrient-lean landscape. These advantages come with modern precautions. Fair skin burns easily under strong sun, and the Celtic iron gene can cause iron overload if there are two mutated copies. Regardless, Celtic ancestry reflects a long adaptation to scarcity, transforming faint light and modest diets into enduring strength. Turkic ancestry. Turkic ancestry originates across the wide expanse of Central Asia, prominently in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Uzbekistan, with deeper roots in the Altai and Siberian highlands where early Turkic peoples first formed. These regions of freezing winters, open grasslands, and high altitude migration shaped a genetic profile centered on endurance. This ancestry reflects a body adapted to environmental extremes, efficient heat conservation in sub-zero temperatures, steady oxygen use at elevated altitudes, and immune systems refined through close contact with herds and recurrent steppe epidemics. These traits form the biological backbone of nomadic life. One of the most distinct advantages appears in oxygen regulation genes. Some Kyrgyz and Altai populations carry variants in EPAS1, a gene also prominent in Tibetan highlanders, allowing stable oxygen use without producing excessive red blood cells. This protects the heart, prevents blood thickening at altitude, and supports long periods of exertion in thin air. In practical terms, it means sustained endurance during high mountain travel, fewer symptoms of altitude stress, and a calmer physiological response where oxygen is scarce. Yet these advantages come with modern challenges. Cold adapted metabolisms may increase the risk of obesity and hypertension in sedentary urban settings, and historically strengthened immune responses can raise susceptibility to certain autoimmune conditions. Still, this ancestry leaves a quiet imprint. Evidence of people shaped by altitude, winter, and the wide horizons that demanded both strength and adaptability. Yoruba and Igbo Ancestry Yoruba and Igbo ancestry emerges in the warm, open landscapes of southern Nigeria, where dense forests meet savanna. Over thousands of years, these environments molded populations with traits built for power, resilience, and heat tolerance. Deep melanin pigmentation protects against intense equatorial sunlight, preserving folate and guarding skin from UV damage. Long limbs and efficient cooling systems emerged under a hot climate, supporting both endurance in warm conditions and steady physical output. At the microscopic level, red blood cell variants, such as the sickle cell trait or hemoglobin C, offered protection against malaria, granting carriers far better survival odds in childhood. Many Yoruba or Igbo individuals carry the active form of alpha-actinin-3, a gene linked to fast twitch fibers that fire with exceptional speed. Paired with naturally high bone density, the result is a body built for explosive force, accelerating quickly, jumping powerfully, and withstanding impact with remarkable durability. Muscles contract with clean precision, and bones hold firm beneath it. These advantages carry certain costs. The same sickle cell trait that protects against malaria can produce severe blood disease when both copies are inherited. And dense, power-oriented musculature may be less suited for elite long-distance performance. Even so, this ancestry reflects a lineage shaped by the need to outlive both predators and parasites, an enduring testament to strength honed under pressure. Gran Chaco and Pampas Ancestry Gran Chaco and Pampas ancestry traces back to the hot, semi-arid lowlands of northern Argentina, Paraguay, and southern Bolivia, regions where summers reach extremes and food arrives in irregular rhythms. For thousands of years, indigenous groups such as the Com, Huichi, and Pilaga developed physiologies shaped by heat, scarcity, and constant movement across open plains. Many individuals descend from ancestors who navigated long distances on foot, giving these populations a natural ease with sustained activity. High sweat gland density, inherited from ancient lineages, supports efficient cooling in punishing climates. Their lean, long-limbed builds also disperse heat effectively, a body architecture suited to subtropical grasslands 
rather than cold forests. These populations often show exceptional tolerance to dehydration, maintaining circulation and stable core temperature even when water is limited. At the same time, their metabolism shifts smoothly between burning carbohydrates and fats, a trait forged through feast and famine cycles. This flexibility protects muscle during fasts, preserves energy when food is scarce, and prevents metabolic collapse under extreme exertion. Modern changes introduce their own risks. Metabolism tuned for scarcity can struggle with constant caloric abundance, contributing to rising rates of diabetes when traditional lifestyles fade. Through it all, this ancestry reflects a lineage built for persistence, bodies shaped to withstand hot winds, long walks, and the unpredictable generosity of the land. Caucasus Ancestry Caucasus ancestry centers on the mountainous regions of Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan, where steep valleys and centuries of migration created one of Eurasia's most genetically diverse populations. This diversity is especially concentrated in traits linked to disease resistance. High overall genetic variation reduces the chance of harmful recessive gene pairings, contributing to lower rates of certain inherited disorders. Mountain life selected for strong cardiovascular capacity and antioxidant genes, while generations living at cultural and geographic crossroads through the Silk Road Corridor fostered adaptability to new foods, climates, and pathogens. These strengths could all contribute to the exceptional longevity found in pockets of Caucasus communities. Caucasus populations also show unusually high HLA heterozygosity, meaning individuals often hold two different versions of key immune genes. This broadens the range of pathogens their immune cells can recognize. It acts as a genetic safeguard, enhancing defense against unfamiliar infections and supporting faster community recovery after epidemics. Yet immunity, this powerful carries trade-offs, heightened inflammatory responses, and slightly elevated risks of autoimmune conditions. Caucasus populations reflect a long history of survival in a crossroads region where diversity became its greatest biological shield. Manchurian Ancestry Manchurian ancestry is formed in the broad, icy plains of Northeast Asia, regions where long winters, early agriculture, and shifting empires shape bodies to thrive on both hardship and harvest. Descendants appear today across northeastern China in parts of Siberia, carrying physiological traces of a landscape defined by cold air and carbohydrate-rich foods. Northern East Asian populations often maintain stable energy on grain-based diets. Their facial morphology, broad cheekbones, insulated sinus cavities, subtly warms the air they breathe, and their builds tend toward compact strength that suits life in sub-zero seasons. Manchurian groups typically carry elevated copies of the AMY1 gene, filling saliva with amylase that rapidly breaks down millet, wheat, and rice into ready fuel. This fast access to glucose pairs with traits that conserve heat. Shorter limbs, sturdy torsos, and circulation adapted to maintain warmth during long months outdoors. Together, these features create bodies that turn grains into steady power while staying comfortable in deep cold. But there are modern caveats. Efficient starch digestion can encourage blood sugar spikes with constant refined carbs, and compact builds may gain weight quickly in sedentary life. Still, Manchurian ancestry remains a testament to survival shaped by frost and field, drawing energy from humble grains and endurance from winter itself. African Pygmy Ancestry African Pygmy Ancestry traces back to the deep forests of the Congo Basin, where dense canopy, constant humidity, and a chemically complex ecosystem shaped one of the most specialized human adaptations on Earth. For tens of thousands of years, groups such as the Aka, Baka, and Mbuti lived in an environment rich in wildlife but nutritionally unpredictable, demanding bodies that could endure exertion, heat, and frequent infections. Their small body size reduced calorie needs and allowed agile movement through thick undergrowth. High baseline immunity helped withstand parasites and chronic wounds that would debilitate outsiders, enabling long foraging treks in harsh conditions. These populations show elevated frequencies of fast-acting detox genes, such as NAT2 and variants in the cytochrome P450 family, allowing them to neutralize plant defenses found in bitter tubers, nuts, seeds, and certain mushrooms. This adaptation transformed challenging rainforest foods into safe, usable energy, providing a dietary safety net when game was scarce or famine threatened. Modern transitions reveal their trade-offs. Bodies optimized for sparse, wild diets may struggle with processed foods or high salt intake, increasing metabolic strain in new environments. Across the rainforest, their ancestry stands as evidence that human endurance can be biochemical as much as physical. Pashtun Ancestry Pashtun ancestry developed in the harsh uplands of Afghanistan and Pakistan 
where steep valleys, thin soils, and long treks shaped bodies built for resilience. Life between the Hindu Kush and the arid plains demanded people who could move, adapt, and sustain themselves on whatever their herds and harvests offered. Many Pashtun communities show natural stamina on rugged terrain, reflecting a heritage of herding across mountains and passes. Their physiques often balance strength with leanness, aided by climates that reward efficient heat dissipation in summer and reliable warmth retention in winter. Pashtun populations carry high rates of lactase persistence, enabling lifelong digestion of milk. At the same time, early reliance on wheat and other cereals favored individuals who could convert starch into stable energy without rapid fatigue. Together, these adaptations created a system capable of turning yogurt, bread, and dry rations into sustained power for demanding landscapes. These advantages bring modern caveats. Efficient energy storage can lead to weight gain with sedentary living, and dairy-heavy diets may elevate cardiovascular strain in urban contexts. And yet, Pashtun ancestry reflects a physiology tuned to mountains and movement, strength drawn from simple foods, and the endurance to cross steep horizons. Arabian Peninsula Ancestry Arabian Peninsula ancestry emerges from deserts where heat is constant, shade is rare, and water is a precious, unpredictable visitor. Across these landscapes, Bedouin, Yemeni, Omani, and Gulf Arab communities developed physiology built for conservation. Kidneys that reclaim nearly every drop of fluid, sweat glands that reabsorb salt before it's lost, and circulatory systems that stay stable even during long hours of dehydration. This ancestry excels at fluid balance. Urine remains highly concentrated, even after salty meals. Sweat flows, but blood sodium barely shifts. Thirst signals remain muted until dehydration is severe, enabling controlled intake when water sources are distant. Combined with medium brown skin that shields midday sun and traditional clothing that amplifies cooling, these traits create a biology uniquely suited for arid endurance. But adaptations shaped for scarcity become fragile in modern abundance. Salt retention now fuels widespread hypertension and muted thirst can mask dangerous dehydration and bodies optimized for dry heat often struggle in humid or sedentary environments. These vulnerabilities grow sharper when climate and lifestyle no longer mirror ancestral deserts. Still, Arabian ancestry reflects a remarkable equilibrium, human physiology sculpted by sand, sun, and the discipline of survival. Mongmian ancestry. Mongmian ancestry emerged in the steep highlands of southern China and northern Indochina, where villages cling to ridgelines and daily life unfolds across thousands of vertical feet. Generations spent farming terraced slopes, carrying loads between valleys, and navigating thin, cold air shaped a population accustomed to long ascents and constant movement. Mountain living rewarded balance, stamina, and adaptability. People of ancestry often show strong leg power, reliable oxygen use at mid-altitude, and exceptional sure-footed endurance. Their mixed agricultural forager diets encouraged metabolic versatility, allowing them to shift between lean vegetable staples and dense rice-based energy sources. This ecological and cultural synergy supported a lifestyle where effort was continuous and terrain defined every task. Many Hmong-Mian individuals retained the fully active ancestral ALDH2 enzyme alongside a highly efficient ADH1B variant, breaking down alcohol rapidly and clearing toxic intermediates almost completely. Unlike neighboring East Asian populations that evolved the Asian flush mutation, these highland groups diverged early, never adopting the deterrent pathway. The result is a metabolism that handles fermented brews with uncommon ease, converting them cleanly to usable energy. This advantage, however, lacks built-in safeguards. Without the flushing response, overuse can become a modern risk. Across mountain ridges, this ancestry reflects a physiology tuned to altitude, effort, and the clarity of an older metabolic design. Finno-Ugric Ancestry Finno-Ugric ancestry took shape across the boreal north of Europe among Finns, Sami, and Karelians, who endured frozen lakes, dim winters, and months of near silence under snow. Survival here required more than tolerance. It demanded stability in an environment that rarely relented. Seasonal biology became finely tuned. Bodies adjusted smoothly to extreme swings in daylight, maintaining sleep, mood, and energy through long polar nights and endless summer days. Cultural practices like sauna bathing and cold plunges reinforced this physiology, training circulation to adapt quickly rather than go into shock. Compact builds and efficient fat distribution further supported thermal balance without excess strain. The most distinctive hidden advantage lies in silent heat production. Finno-Ugric populations show strong activation of brown adipose tissue, 
driven by variants in thermogenic genes, such as UCP1. Instead of relying on violent shivering, their bodies convert calories directly into steady internal warmth. Core temperature remains remarkably stable, even at rest or during sleep in sub-zero conditions, conserving energy while protecting vital organs. Heat rises quietly, evenly, and without fatigue. But this adaptation has modern flaws. Metabolisms built to burn fuel for warmth can clash with sedentary lifestyles, raising cardiovascular risk if activity declines. Even so, this ancestry reflects a rare evolutionary refinement. Bodies that meet the cold, not with resistance, but with calm, continuous warmth. Mixed Ancestry Mixed ancestry takes shape wherever human communities meet, today in countries like Brazil, the United States, and South Africa, and historically in trading hubs from the Caribbean to Central Asia. These crossings create genomes that blend different evolutionary histories, each carrying adaptations shaped by distant environments. Some mixed ancestry individuals inherit intermediate skin tones that protect against UV damage, yet still allow vitamin D production, along with bodies and immune profiles shaped by more than one climate and disease environment. Notably, people with more diverse ancestry carry reduced recessive disease burden. When parents come from distant gene pools, their children are less likely to receive two identical copies of a harmful mutation. Studies show that outbred individuals have fewer of these risky pairings, lowering the odds of disorders like cystic fibrosis or certain blood diseases that only appear when both gene copies are affected. In this way, variety acts as a buffer against rare inherited conditions. But this protection has limits. Mixed ancestry does not prevent lifestyle-driven illness. Genetic diversity isn't a cure-all, but it consistently reshapes risk in ways that favor resilience. If you didn't hear your genetic ancestry, check out parts one, two, or three. Hope you enjoyed watching this series, and if you want to learn more, check out these other videos.